Hi, hi, and welcome to LNA Does Audio Stuff. Hey, this is the final and the last episode of this course on how to write drums with MIDI for non-drummers. So in this episode, we will look at... What are we going to look at? We're going to talk about how to choose sounds. What kind of different sounds are there? But also how to create your own kits and also a little bit about sampling. Before we continue, remember to subscribe and hit the bell icon. So you will definitely be notified every single time I post because you don't want to miss any of these. But hey, before we go to the Ableton Live tips and tricks on how to use your samples and stuff, let's just listen to what are the tips that Sarah Lee Shaw has to share with us today about drums and creating drum beats. So let's go to the interview and see what she has to say. Um, I think again it's like listening to the different genres and even like picking out um, you know maybe sort of like researching the like top five funk drummers for example and mm. listening to the bands that they play in or like the top five rock drummers you know uh, like John Bonham is a classic, like loads of people are just like, oh, it's the Bonham sound because um, he, he played in that era of time where, you know, drums were big and bombastic sound and then they used big kick drums and stuff like that. And, you know, he hit the drums with flipping basically tree trunks. He had really heavy sticks and um, he just, you know, really made the drums sing. Um, so I think go, going and looking back, Back, back before then, you know, bands had a particular sound and, it, and a lot of it was down to their drummer. Like the drummer was kind of a, a pivotal role in, in how they sounded. Like Jimi Hendrix experience, for example, with Mitch, Mitch, Mitch Mitchell. And then you go back to the jazz drummers as well. Like they all like, were key to that sort of sound. So I think sort of going back and listening to the, in each genre and maybe like say, just Googling our top five funk drummers or top five rock drummers, I think really help, like can really help. Um, and so for example, like with funk music, like they, the snares are quite often quite sort of like tight and high pitched. Whereas like in disco music, the, the snares are like bigger and like they're a bit more like, sort of like the skins are a bit more tuned, a bit more flat, flat. So it's just a bit of a sort of more of a fat, a funk, like a funky kind of sound. And, and yeah, in rock rock music in the 70s, like just really, really big bass drums. But also, and I think that kind of goes down to um, technological history where, um, you know, PA systems weren't up what, what they are now. So every, everything was relying on the instrument itself to make the sound rather than having like a math, whopping massive PA like we do now. So, um, so usually, um, so you can have the depth of the, of the snare. So you can have like quite a shallow snare is going to be really like high pitched. Um, whereas a deep snare is going to have a, like generally a lower pitch. It's going to sort of, sort of be a bit more, it's going to be a bit more bassy. Um, you can also have a little different sizes in diameter. So that's, yeah, that's more rare. I mean, I've got, I don't know if you, you can see it. Um, no, you can't see it from here. I've got like a little um, like drum and bass, small little snare drum there, but it's, it's actually it's actually kind of as deep as a standard snare drum, but it's the diameter is quite small and it's got quite a sort of like, so it's high pitched, but it's loud. Oh. So, so yeah, I think the depth can really like make a difference to the volume of the, of the snare as well. Also the, um, the actual snare itself underneath, how tight or loose that is. Then you can also take the snares on and off. So if you take the snares off, then obviously you're just having the, the sound of the actual drum without the snare hitting on the bottom skin. Um, I think, yeah, I think, I mean, the best thing that I, I would say is like research drummers, like especially drummers from, you know, from the past, the 60s, 70s, 80s, like, you know, when almost drums was in its heyday in, in the studio and sort of like just, See what, see what they were doing like and you know um because everything was recorded live then so it, it wasn't just like here's a drum loop and, and then we'll, we'll build the song and like the drummer brought something to the table and everything was recorded as a band so I think there's lots to learn from there because 
you you know you can hear a drummer at work whereas now I think it's you know the drummer's brought in to add the live energy but not necessarily like inform the song from its sort of infancy so I think the best thing to do is kind of look back and um I can maybe give you, give you a list of um, drummers and you can add it into the... Okay, here we go. So tip number one is choosing sounds. How do we understand sound? So basically every single genre has a little bit of a vibe, what kind of sounds kind of suit the best for that genre. One way to really kind of learn how to understand the different kick sounds and different snare sounds and different hi-hat sounds is using the DS drum instruments. So these come with Ableton Live Suite. So you do have to need to have, you do have to need to have, you need to have Maxwell Live to make these work. You can find them under instruments and drum synths. And then under there we have DS drums. So we have tom, snare, sampler, uh, kick, hi-hat, FM, cymbal, clap and clang, clang. Clang. I have now a drum rack and I put kick, snare and hi-hat here. So kick example, this could be transformed to example hip hop kick very easily. So we can put the decay a lot longer. There we go. Can you hear this? We can also put the pitch down a lot. Envelope. There we go or put no drive at all and we can get a little bit smoother kind of subby bass. We get a proper sub bass and then bring the pitch up a little bit. We get like an 808 kick. What about EDM? Well, we bring the decay up, bring the pitch up and drive up. dance party also make a house kick quite fast take the pitch down a little bit and also bring the decay a little bit longer drive up a little bit decay maybe a little bit less actually we want a bit more snappy we can add a click to it bring the pitch down actually there we go What I'm trying to demonstrate this with is that every single drum sounds have their timbre characteristic, characteristic, characteristics. How you can practice on how to recognize these when you're listening to genres and you're like, how do, I, how do I get that kick? Is learn to understand pitch. How high is the kick? How high is the snare? Does it have drive? What's, what does drive sound like? So use drive. Learn to understand what the harmonics mean to the sound. Also decay. How is decay or how is envelope working with the sound? Snare. We also have color. We have tone. We also have low pass, high pass and bypass filters. Also have a decay and tune. These controls again define a lot how snares sound. So color, example and decay. We can add a lot of tone. So we get the very ch sound color down. Or we can have this kind of very drum machine sound. And so on high pass, we can put more natural 808 sound. The only way for you to kind of learn to recognize what you want is to learn to understand timbre and what those different areas are. For this, I have added some more learning material down below. So you can actually sit down and practice listening. <laughs> hey, at this point, let's just quickly give a massive, massive thank you to the sponsor of this series, DistroKid. I have personally used DistroKid for years now because I do like how many functions DistroKid actually can provide you as an independent artist. So example, you have a thing called Hyperfollow. This one link contains every single store, every single streaming platform that has the song on it. It's just basically this one stop 
place for your music. But like Hybe Follow, there's other really cool features that DistroKid has that are amazing for marketing. Example, Spotify Canva. So it's this moving image that you can put behind your song, supporting the branding and also making your Spotify account look a lot more professional. There's possibility for you to create these promo cards. You know, you can use them in your Instagram stories. You can use them in your feed because you need to have a lot of content to push out that you have a release coming or that you just released the song. But hey, also you're lucky, lucky, lucky because DistroKid is now giving 7% off from all new memberships in there. So if you're interested of the discount, but also you're interested just to check DistroKid out, then go to the links down below. Thank you again for DistroKid so much for supporting my channel and sponsoring this series. So thank you so much. And let's get back into the tutorial now. Number two is creating your own kits. Already, I have a drum rack in front of me. I've started to create my own kit. So if you don't know how to get drum rack, you can get an empty one here. You go to drums, you go drum rack, and it's just the top one here. That's an empty drum rack. You put it in a MIDI track, and there we go. You have an empty canvas. This you can fill with almost everything. You can design, of course, drum sounds with almost any synthesizer. So we can, example, put analog or, you know, operator and create different, you know, drum sounds. Example, operator, there we go. A little bit of a noise. There we go. We have a little bit of a snare happening already there. So this is what I mean. We can add anything in there. We can also obviously go into samples, pick up stuff from here, drop them in. And audio samples always, when you drop them in here, they open it in a simpler. manipulating them because you know now example I have this vocal inhale here I can just use the controls in my simpler to manipulate it to create it more like a drum sound or I can just use it as a harmonic quality for my drum kit also I recommend going to your packs and just finding drum sounds so example most of packs have one shots here we go so example we have stabs <laughs> So example, if you want to be one of those very cool um, finger drumming uh, lo-fi people, then go and get some cool orchestral lo-fi sounds. Uh, add them to your drum rack. And then if you open this up in your um, example, Launchpad X or your Push 2, now you can basically finger drum whatever you have here in the drum rack. <laughs> We can also add examples, splice or loop cloud. This is a really good plan, by the way. If you are not really sure about the genres, you could actually use splice or loop cloud and find example, hip hop, classic hip hop. And then we're gonna find a kick from, put kick as well. So now we get classic hip hop kicks. And we can get it into our, directly, look. I just literally dragged it from loop cloud here. Now I have it here. Or we can go splice, search, lo-fi, kick. We want to be that person. I want to be that person on Instagram who makes lo-fi beats. There we go. That makes me cool. We're going to drag and drop it into our kit. Now, obviously, we can just uh, save this. So we can go to the save icon there and put here, this kit makes me cool. There we go. We are in places, user library, presets, drum rack. This make, kit makes me cool. And now every time I want to become cool and use the kit, I can just go here and just drag it to a new MIDI track.
number three is slicing samples with take lanes. One of my favorite ways to create beats. We've been using a lot of packs. So I'm just going to go to packs. And then from here, I'm going to go to uh, chop and swing samples. And instead of one shots, we're going to actually go to loops and chords. And we're going to go drum loops and full loops. Now we're going to make an audio track. And now I'm going to go and add a couple take lanes. Insert take lane. It's also Alt, Shift and T. So I'm going to add three of them there. Okay. And I'm going to find samples that are relatively similar. So let's go here. That one there. That one there. And that one there. So they're, they are not like too different. Okay. Now I take the pen tool. And I'm now gonna just pick some sounds from here quite randomly. Different sounds from different levels. So we're doing comping. So comping gives us this randomization of uh, putting many different rhythms together without thinking too much about slicing. So let's just listen how that sounds. Let's add some more sounds there. Okay. Oh, I really like the last loop and the, the first one. So I'm just going to move these ones here. And now we're going to put these together by command J. Voila. We can remove the take lanes and now from those three samples, we have now our own rhythm. <laughs> That's so much fun. I really enjoyed that. And if you want to do more glitchy ones, choose three very different ones. So example, that one. I'm just very randomly picking something here. So let's just pick some and also leave more like space between them. Already, can you hear that? That's like so much glitchier. Gonna copy that there. So we're just being very, very random like this. Okay, and what if we just now make that example loop it and make it also half fast using this control there. <laughs> I just want to be random and try how it sounds reverse. Could sound really cool on the top of some other drums. <gasps> How about on the top of these? How about them together? I don't know where we just went. That was, that was trippy, trippy. That was kind of fun though. <laughs> so as I said, you can just become almost like very random with your beat. Uh, you don't need to worry too much of the actual theory of making beats and clicking media notes and stuff when you can use that. Tip number four is layering. We are using samples to layer drum patterns that we already have. Let's go to our hip hop P here. This beat example, we want to use now some layers to make it a little bit better. I feel like the kick here in the beginning is a bit too shallow. So it's kind of very high note, isn't it? So I want to add a very boom sound to it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and find a boom bass sound. On a lo-fi stuff, boom sounds really nice. So I'm just going to fi uh, find an empty slot. So example, that one there. I, I wasn't using that at all. So I'm going to do that. Me dropping it here. 
now shows it in here. So I'm just going to add the boom sound to that first kick. And let's listen how that changed it. That's a one really fast way of using samples is just layer what you already have. So if something is a bit higher, maybe add a lower one under it. Another one that I really like is using top end loops. So remember we you talked about what's very important in different genres and different kits is kick, snare and hi-hat. So that usually defines a lot of the groove, but sometimes we struggle with creating hi-hats and this is one of my favorite things. So I'm just gonna take the hi-hats away from this beat. There's a really good pack for that actually in Ableton Live and you can find these kind of loops in many, many packs anywhere. So Chop and Swing actually has a lot of good samples like this. So we go here, uh, samples, and then loops and chords. And then from here we go drum loops and top loops. Have you used these before? They're great. So let's just find one that is quite natural kit. That sounds really cool. I really like that, but it also has vinyl distortion on it. I'm not gonna need that anymore. So what I now, I'm gonna just try how they sound together. Yeah, yeah. See, that sounds amazing. And now this is a little trip, trip, tip. We are on a trip. So here's a tip. So what we can do is also now make this bit like a room mic situation. So there's a couple of ways we can do this. We can duplicate this and have one of these as a, the left one, this one is dry, top line, and this one is room, okay? For this second uh, one, we're gonna go to audio effects, utility, and we're gonna use the width to widen it up a little bit. Take the volume down on it. Just so that it's really wide, okay? On this one now, on the room one, we also add reverb. So it sounds a lot like a big room. On the reverb, we wanna choose a reverb that actually sounds a lot more like a room. So audio effects and then go to reverb. And then from here, let's like big room. Yeah, that's pretty good. So we didn't only put it very wide, we also added a reverb to it. Let's just see how it sounds all together. And just listen how it sounds, just the, uh, the kick and snare being really dry in the middle. And then we have this big room top line going on the top. Maybe make this now a little bit less wide because we don't have the other loop there. I actually really like that. That is a good place to finish this course. So I really hope that you have learned a lot from this. Please subscribe, please hit the bell icon and let me know what course do you wanna have next. Please also check out my Patreon. These are my amazing Patreon family members. So we have weekly live streams. We have monthly masterclasses. I give fe feedback for people uh, in different tiers. And yes, we have also a very lovely Discord channel where you can meet a lot of awesome people and have a lot of fun. So come there to play with us. <laughs> please subscribe, please hit the bell icon and have a very, very, very lovely day.